So we tried, to be fair, guys, this is the beginning of the episode, by the way. To be fair, we tried banter. We, tr- we, had, we had five minutes of banter in. And we and, failed. And we failed so bad. None of it was usable. So now we're where we are at now, and, and, and clearly. And so here's our new try at banter. Okay. Well, today I wanted to talk to you guys about intermittent fasting. Okay. I'm gonna make you wanted to talk to me or the audience? I, I want to talk to you about it. Okay. Are it's you, always us. You want to yeah, talk yeah. to me? You wanna talk the to only me? other time you we talk, talk to, to the about? audience. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, are we talking about we talking about eight hours? Are we talking so about... So I kind of wanted to just like address the whole thing of intermittent fasting. So I wanted mm-hmm. to start off by saying... When I had first started my weight loss journey at 192 last year, 192 pounds, I was searching endlessly for this sentence. Why am I not losing weight in a calorie deficit? Okay. So I was like, Google, YouTube, Facebook, I got everywhere for this answer. Everywhere I would come up, the answer was intermittent fasting and I would skip it and I would go, I can't do that. Next one. The only, the answer to this is intermittent fasting. I was like, I can't do that. Next one. How I lost my weight postpartum when I had gained weight postpartum. Intermittent fasting. I was like, nope, can't do that. Great that that worked for you. I can't do that. Yeah. Because my blood sugar, right? Would just crash and I I had to eat every couple of hours. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, I literally remember watching this video of this girl talk about her same experience as mine and she ended up doing, I don't know, I think she did 16-8. But anyways, I wanted to sort of like start off by... I thought there was no way in the world I would ever get to a point in my life I could do intermittent fasting. Yeah. No matter what, I was never going to get there. I have eaten every hour and a half, two hours for my entire life. That's just, that's what I thought was normal. You eat breakfast, you have a snack, or maybe you have something in the morning and then you have breakfast and then you have a snack. I didn't even know, I wasn't even aware that this is what I was doing until I discovered intermittent fasting. The crazy thing though is that you did it within about two days. Like it didn't actually take you that long to get into intermittent fasting. I don't, I don't remember it that clearly. I don't remember the, how many days it took me to, to go. Cause I, I know in the beginning I was only focused on what I was eating. I was only focused on making sure that my food was low carb because I was trying to stabilize my blood sugars. I see. Yeah. I think it took me a bit to actually get to that point. We I were do re- doing three meals at first. About a year ago. No, but what I mean is maybe three meals, but I wasn't doing three meals and five snacks. No. I was doing three meals, right? No. And so that was the first immediate change. Right. I actually found in the car the other day when I was cleaning it out. Uh oh. Shame. Uh, some almonds that I had at the bottom of the con- the center console yeah. because you remember I couldn't leave the house without like fifteen different snacks. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I grabbed these almonds and I'm looking them at them with like so emo- so much emotion because these almonds were like the thing that reminded me that I used to not be able to go from like here to the post office Mm -hmm. without eating something on the way because I couldn't go that long without food. Anyways, it was kind of like an emotional thing because I was like, I don't need you anymore. I'm going to, I'm going to stop you right there. You think that's bad. And I understand that they're totally different topics because one was not my reliance on food. I, I left a 16 pound brisket in my car for Uh -uh. a week and a half. Oh, that's an expensive mistake. It was. It Not was. a 99 cent bag of almonds. No, it wasn't about like, oh, I can't go from here to the post office without eating a 16 pound brisket. But it was the fact that I went to go make, I was, I smoke brisket like once a month. Like, no, like I, in a smoker. <laughs> in your vape. I the Brisket I, juice. I smoke brisket once a month. Um, and you know, it's delicious. It's literally salt, pepper, and brisket. But because yeah. of the wood smoke, it's the most flavorful thing you've ever had. You make keto brisket tacos with lettuce wrap. Holy crap. Anyway, I went to go make it, and it wasn't in my fridge. And then I check. I have two fridges. I have one in my garage. I go to check that fridge. It's not there. And I'm like, no one loses a 16-pound brisket. It's yeah. not in my freezers. It's not anywhere. It turns out it was, like, underneath the back seat in my car. And Who so does that? Me. No. And Only I could do that's that. not okay. Was it disturbing? There's nothing about Comment that. below if you've ever left a 16-pound brisket in your car. At what? 12 pounds, we don't care. Was it Was it disturbing? Like, did it smell it was, bad? I didn't want to know that about myself, that I was capable of doing something like that. Well, I found, like, five pounds of meat on our garage floor one day, <laughs> and a juice leaked out, and then there was about a thousand fruit flies. And then Tiffany was like, oh, my God, I did that two days ago. Yeah, I was getting rid of, of all of the meat in our deep freezer that had sugar added to it. And 
I did half of the step. I forgot to throw it in the trash. I put it on the floor. Yeah, so this was my present coming home. I was like, there's a dead rat okay, in but the I'm gonna garage. Tell, I'm going to tell you why, though. I for, I'm going to tell you why I forgot. Yeah. Because I was moving all the good meat inside. So yeah. my last trip inside to put the meat in the freezer. You're like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. That's usually what happens in everything. Yeah, I did not. I did not. I did not. Well, I guess maybe it's genetic. It's genetic. That's what I've decided. Yeah. It's probably genetic. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Okay. My last thing for you guys before you get back to it is, you know, I've decided not to wear shoes today, so my feet are just out and about, and I don't think our viewers can see, but if you can... I can't smell I them. I never wear shoes. I don't like wearing shoes. I wear Am shoes I every day. One? Can they comment below if they like to wear shoes? I hate wearing I shoes. I hate wearing shoes. And socks. And socks. Oh, I, I've always, since and I was pants. like three. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Back to it. <laughs> okay. So intermittent fasting. So a lot of people think of fasting as starving. And that is the first sort of common misconception that I wanted to address. So the difference between fasting and starving is fasting is a window of time that you are not eating to allow your body to run on body fat for fuel. Because we have two fuel sources, sugar slash carbohydrates or fat, including dietary and body fat. And so while you're fasting, you're are running on body fat. So anyways, there's different time segments that you can do. And there's a great app called Carb Manager, not sponsored, not affiliated, but it's one that I really use. And I one that I really like and use, and they have different um, fasting techniques that you can use. You can incorporate 12, you could do 16, you could do 18, 20, 22, and 24. Mm -hmm. And then they have an option for extended fasting too, um, for different people who have different goals and whatnot. Um, for me right now, I'm actually doing and my Instagram followers know this because I've been tracking every day, uh, one meal a day, which is a 22, two. So 22 hours fasted, including overnight. And mm -hmm. then two hours of the day where you consume your macronutrients, your vitamins, coffee, whatever you're going to have during the day. The rest of the time you are running off of your body fat for energy. So you're burning fat for fuel to get you through all the other time. And the cool thing is, is it doesn't run out. So you never crash and you never get tired. Well, well, never I runs was going to say, so this is, I would really want to hammer this point in because it's such a common misconception about this process. Intermittent fasting is Wait, not. Wait, are you doing one meal a day? I'm doing full on one meal a day. Oh. I don't do a two hour window. What this do you is do? The, I just do one meal and normally, I don't chug this, but normally I would because okay. I just ate right before this. Yeah. And I would normally chug this because my window is, is like kind of half an hour. Okay. Um, the only exception being lemons, uh, okay. lemon water, lemon juice into water, yeah. uh, which is what handled it for me. I've talked about this a million times. If you think you cannot intermittent fast two or three lemons a day, half a lemon in you know, your eight ounces of water, drink that and you will go, holy crap, I can go from zero to intermittent fast. No problem. So exactly what I did. But wait, I was going to say something. Wait, but I, I don't know. You're, you're way more important than me. My <laughs> adventure to fit is not as important as I'm your adventure forget. to fit. I, I actually can't do lemons, so I wanted to interject. Oh. It does spike my blood sugar to wow. the point that it takes me out of fasting. Wow. So I don't do lemons for the sake of like, okay, I'm going to say the purpose of me doing intermittent fasting at this point is for to induce autophagy, which is at hour 18. Yeah. So I can do nothing to interfere. And the reason why I'm doing that is to handle the, the less the rest of the loose skin uh, slash body fat that I have on my arms and on my upper thighs. So if I have lemons and it breaks my fast, then I don't induce autophagy. And so I'm doing this long fast without getting the benefits of fasting. What I do instead of lemon is I actually put it in here. It's unsweetened, uh, unflavored electrolytes. So it's salt, potass potassium, calcium, magnesium. And every time I even feel any sort of anything where I'm slightly hungry or thinking about food or I'm getting a little bit tired. I have salt, potassium, all the electrolytes and I, it just goes away. I mean, like I, I don't even need to drink all of it. I just have a few sips. And if I put it in a big enough glass like this, which is 32 ounces, you don't taste it at all. Yeah. People on Instagram will see me just take it as a shot because I don't want to deal with that. Sometimes I need the electrolytes, but I don't feel like drinking so much. Right. But this is the way I do it. I, I will say I will say that it helps uh, if you've got something also with a straw because a lot of the time I'm, I don't want to eat because I'm hungry. I want to eat because I'm bored. Mm -hmm. And yes. having having even just water with a straw. Yeah. Um, and drinking that will help me. Um, but I want to say a few things now that you've said that. My rebuttal to that is I want everyone to keep in mind, you know, each body is different. Yes, 100%. The, 
uh, Tiffany's my sister, right? As far as we know, we have the same mother and father. What? Okay. What? What? I know I'm so white. I know that if I go outside, my skin will like set on fire and Tiffany's pretty tan. But we are related. And as far as we know, we both have the exact same parents, not just the same uh, mother or The only father. reason nice. I'm tan is because I've been going for walks. Yes. This well, is no, news. that's not true because that's new. And I've this been editing bright. your skin for like, uh, well, this sounds super creepy, but I've been editing your skin <laughs> for like a month and a half and you're way tanner than I am. Break anyway. Breaking news. Y'all are siblings. I'm Jared Leto. Anyway... Uh, so each body is different. I don't. I go into ketosis in two days. Tiffany takes uh, three weeks to go back into yeah. ketosis. Four weeks to go back into ketosis. Lemons don't break my fast. They don't spike my blood sugar. My blood sugar rests at like seventy. Um, even though I was I was obese, I was uh, two hundred and thirty seven pounds, which is about eighty or ninety pounds overweight uh, for my height. Um, and now I'm how tall are you? Uh, five ten. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. 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 so I do want to say that just that quick interjection. Yeah, everybody the, is different. That's right. Yes. Try lemons and see if, and just the same is true for coffee. Yes. Try coffee because coffee does break my fast. My, I have a, a monitor where, hello, a monitor and it gives me a bad rating for. So, yeah. What I would say is, is do what's considered the norm, things that don't break your fast and then see if they do for you. Yeah. You know, and um, in, in the in the fasting books, too, they talk about what you can do while you're fasting. And I, I think pretty standardly, they say you can have black coffee, tea and water. Uh, I've tried black tea and I got, I think, a rating of a six on my monitor saying it, it pretty heavily affected my blood sugar. What does a black this six tea. mean? So so there's ratings of zero to ten. Ten means it didn't affect your blood sugar at all. Mm -hmm. And the lower it gets, the more impact it made. So black coffee gave me a nine, uh, which is funny because coffee with cream gives me a ten. It's so bizarre. But yeah. anyways, can't can't do either one. So during my um, fasting window to continue autophagy. So anyways, but the black coffee, the black tea gave me like a six rating. Like I mm -hmm. spiked 20 or 30 points from black tea and I only had like five sips of it. So I was like, what the heck? Yeah. So this is why, yes, you have to test for your body because what it yeah. might say in the book, you can have this, 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 and this. The only way you're going to know is by testing and seeing. And if you have something and then it makes you super hungry. Uh, yeah, it could be a problem yeah. for you. Yeah. So the other thing I wanted, oh, sorry, Jonathan. You know what? I was just going to say. You say your thing. I'll say my thing. Just You'll tell us your what thing. you need to tell us. Yeah. I'm in third chair, so I take third priority. Okay. Or maybe you're in first chair and we're in the back. Hey, what's your, what's your, you don't have, what's your fasting schedule right now? So it's, so the f thing I was going to say about your thing is that the other day when we were kind of arguing in the car and I was like, Tiffany, your body is worse than most people's body because <laughs> because you literally can't have garlic You can't salt. say that to your wife. That's I, what I said. You can't say that to your wife. It's like I had a guy at work the other day and he, he – because I've lost 60 pounds and he hasn't seen me in a few months and he – uh, English is not his first language. Yeah. So he points, he points at me, looks at his girlfriend and he goes, I want that. And I'm like, you can't <laughs> say that to another human being at work. That's hilarious. Well, All right, that's an HR nightmare. Well, the thing is that Tiffany was trying to justify this meal, this OMAD meal she did the other day. And I was Wait. like, look, look, this is what happens every time. And what I'm trying to do. I was trying to have a non-carnivore OMAD. Yeah. I was trying to see if I could do, because so many people who do OMAD, if you watch YouTube videos of people who do OMAD, they have free-for-alls, meaning they eat whatever they want, right? And I am doing carnivore OMAD, so I only mm -hmm. have animal products, uh, meat and cheese pretty much. And But I wanted to try one day. I was like, but all of these people, and I was watching a few YouTube videos, so it influenced me to yeah, make yeah, yeah. bad choices. Yeah. And so anyways, I went and lived my best food life, which I don't regret because it was worth the experiment and the experience yeah. with Landon when we went to lunch. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I went through a pretty massive bloating. My this stomach is, was six months pregnant. Yeah, this is why we focus. Hours. So like Tiffany will do this while she'll test something and she's like, oh, no, I could do this now. And then it just completely reverts you know, reverts you. Like, it doesn't happen to me as much. No. And but we know that part of that for me is my hiatal hernia. Yeah. That's a big part of it. Yeah. And because my stomach is sort of in my esophagus. Parker, you're going to need to pull up what a hiatal hernia is. My stomach and my esophagus are is not. Is not a hernia that one contracts in hiatus? Hiatus. Anyways. That's so right. That is what it is. No. And I was supposed to go back for my second follow-up for yeah. it. 
to adjust it still. and I haven't done it yet and I need to do it. And anyways, how you, my sort of symptoms on that is just complete and total indigestion. No matter what I eat, when I swallow vitamins, they get stuck in my chest. Yeah. Um, there's it's in, basically where the stomach is in the esophagus. Yeah. So anyways, that, that is why I react so violently, uh, don't, not to be dramatic, but so violently to nothing. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I wasn't so nice the other day when I was talking. To yeah, You can't tell your them. wife her body is worse than other people. But you know what? She asks for it. She literally says, give me the truth and nothing but the <laughs> truth. So help me okay. God and death do us Sometimes part. Sometimes that's true. Okay. Is. So so oh, my okay. fasting. You do your thing. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. You do your thing, Jonathan. You yeah. do your thing. Trust me. Let's hear it. Trust me. So I just want to tell people science and sh- stuff. Yeah, so my eating window right now is like four to six hours because my schedule is kind of erratic. And right now I'm doing two pounds of beef every single day and six eggs He's and going half a block of cheese. Dr. Jaquish style. I am. What is Dr. Jaquish? The creator of X3. He's uh, weightlifting. X3 is like a w- the mutants? No, it's an exercise machine. and It's, it's an a, exercise machine. He's the author of a book oh, okay. called Weightlifting is a Waste of Time. And yeah. he's extremely controversial. 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 Um, but I started reading his book and my, I mean, he is, he's a bio biomedical engineer. He's He's developed a a technique to make people's bones denser. People who have like really bad hips, osteoporosis. And then he turned it into uh, a discovery of being able to increase uh, muscle mass. And he does like a two pound steak every two days. And I don't know if he has anything else except his own, uh, um, like as a uh, perfect aminos uh, supplement it's called fortigen and so his whole thing is that you don't have to have carbs to gain muscles no so and he's like, like 250 pounds of solid muscle he is and he's like my height or maybe six foot or yeah. something like that and so i was like okay i'm gonna try this i've been working out this this resistance band thing uh for a year but i haven't been gaining muscle so now i've upped my calories to a two to six hour window I'll do two hours if I can. And uh, and basically, I'm getting about 210 to 230 grams of protein every single day, 3,100 calories every single day, and I'm staying at 150. It's so crazy because in the calorie world, right, if only calories mattered, nothing else mattered, he should not be losing weight, well, eating 3,000 calories point a day. I've been trying to say for the last... All right, all right, we're ready. All right. We're ready. Okay. Okay. So that's my story. Okay. Okay. Q. Starting now. Parker. Okay. So (laughs) here's a point I want to clarify. I don't think a lot of people have this confusion, but I do want to just get it out there what it is. A lot of people uh, associate intermittent fasting with malnutrition. Right. Um, you get this all the time. I'm, I'm praying for you because people think you're anorexic, or anorexic basically. I've, they've taken down my TikTok multiple times for promoting mm-hmm. an eating disorder. Yeah, um, which is very strange. Actually, because and I are... just got demonetized on Instagram for having an eating disorder. I love that. Yeah. Thank you, TikTok. I, I literally have like, you know, uh, Harvard University over here. I've got the National Library of Medicine. I have... Uh, um, uh, uh, University of Alabama. I have like all the studies. This is not an unknown thing. I just want to explain essentially what you're doing when you're There's a tremendous fasting. number of studies. Yes, on this, thing. this is it is is a uh, an ample amount. There is a plethora of data. Um, a so spectrum of studies. Yes. I promise my not point to interrupt. Is, my point is, is that your your body has a circadian rhythm, which is essentially just the 24 hour cycle that it operates off of. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a very well known uh, piece of information. And usually for sleep, though. So what does it have to do with intermittent fasting? No, circadian rhythm is just the 24 yeah, hour cycle of your sleep. body. Your circadian rhythm, uh, uh, eight to ten hours of that is your REM cycle and oh. all that stuff. Sleep is a part oh. of the circadian yeah. rhythm. Exactly. Oh, okay. Okay, teaching me something new on our own show. So even outside of ketosis. Uh, like outside of of being fully keto, when you intermittent fast, when you restrict the amount of time that there is an intake of calories, Mm -hmm. what your body will do is it will burn the sugars of your fatty cells and produce ketones regardless of if you are eating keto or not. Right. This is a, a known datum. So it has less to do with the caloric intake that you do have which yes the reason people associate uh malnourishment with intermittent fasting is if you're doing like a a 1200 calorie or 500 calorie intermittent fasting cycle then yes you are malnourished 
But if you are getting Dr. A- Berg has a different viewpoint on that, though. Dr. Berg says, no, the amount of nutrients that you would need for one meal a day only adds up to 900 calories. Well, I I, I, I agree because you can I get agree the with cal- that. But I'm trying to give calories. people the context of if they go. I think we're fighting. I think we're in a fight. I, <laughs> no, but my point is, my point is, is that Dr. Berg has very detailed explanations of what's coming out of that 900 calories. Most mm-hmm. people, when they hear 1200 calories, they're thinking, OK, that's one Big Mac once a day. That's malnourishment. Right. Okay? Which it would be in that sense. Yes. Because yes, so you're not getting not enough. I'm using I'm you. I'm catering to the majority, not to the minority who know, OK, I can get a 900 calorie nutrient dense meal right okay my point is jonathan can consume three thousand calories of whatever the heck you know but in this case he's consuming incredibly healthy meat food. cheese eggs yes. protein yeah if he consumed three thousand calories of, of snickers bars he's probably going to gain weight oh my god I'd probably throw up <laughs> in my mouth because lo- weight loss universally weight loss occurs when the insulin level of the body is lower yeah that's when weight loss occurs. So essentially when you are when you are spiking your insulin once a day or in an 8-hour window and you are giving your body a larger amount of time anywhere from from 16 to 23 hours to have a lower level of insulin that's when you're burning your fat. It yeah. is not a malnourishment. Mm-hmm. There's actually suggestions that it is good for your brain it's good for um your your endocrine system it's good for uh uh, your uh, craniovascular system which is what helps you sleep and that digests your food properly so um this is part of the reason that i said intense bowel movements when you first start are not uncommon because you're sleeping better which is making you digest all of that backlog food Mm -hmm. and what's crazy is i i have that amount it's like two pounds of meat it's it's crazy and i actually think i might up it a little bit but my bowel movements are so small. And, they're and micro, like they're not even there. Basically. There was a post. And I'm not <clears throat> gaining weight and I'm not getting bloated. There was a post on bowel movements and it was basically pictures of what they look like when they're healthy versus unhealthy. And definitely, I would say from starting OMAD, I've gotten into being in the healthy range of bowel mm-hmm. movements. TMI might be, but uh, no, that's the thing is another common misconception with carnivore is that you will never go to the bathroom or you'll be constipated. I've actually experienced the complete opposite. And this is my second time doing OMAD as well. And I also want to follow with my blood work and my fasting schedule shows it. My blood work is perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I eat mainly meat and cheese and I have cream in my coffee. Uh, I don't eat vegetables because of my SIBO. So it's just sort of like what our common theme is of what healthy looks like because what healthy looks like to most people, especially on TikTok, blah, 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 is lots of fruits, lots of vegetables and a little bit of protein, maybe some egg whites or yeah. some ch- lean chicken, which is just not the actual definition of healthy. And the truth is that healthy looks different on everybody. And so this is what has made my body so healthy. And that's all the books that I read. This is their thing. Fat fiction on YouTube goes over how important it is to have this fatty diet of the right healthy fats. But yeah, uh, to go back on like the science of it and what it does, if, if it was a malnourishment issue, my body, my, I wouldn't have perfect blood work. Yeah. My cortisol is perfect. And this is the argument in the dietitian side is that it's going to raise your cortisol and you're running on adrenaline. They said I have perfectly functioning adrenals and my cortisol levels are perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's just not true. I mean, I've That's been, amazing. I've been malnourished. Remember I was 104 pounds when yeah. my nerve damage was at its peak. Um, Wowzers. I almost died. Everybody. Maybe we'll do an episode on it one day. Um, actually, we should pull up a photo of you when you looked like that. I don't think there were any yeah. photos. Nobody wanted to. Nobody take wanted to take a photo of me. I, I like my ribs were poking out, and everyone was told I was going to die in two weeks. So it wasn't like my let's God. get some photos with dying Parker. This will be a good memory. My God. Okay. Before I continue, by the way, uh, I forgot. I wanted to say it in the first two minutes. We are giving away um, uh, sour candy blue motivation. Oh, um, sour nap. blue. Sour, sour blue candy. That's my favorite product. I know. Uh, yeah, we're giving that away. Uh, comment below, whatever you want. Poop emoji seems to be popular. <laughs> Poop emoji. Best, yeah. Our best selling pre workout. Yeah. Tastes the best. It yeah. works the best. It is the best. It's this is so good. This is a side TV. point. Yeah. We're going to deviate for a second and talk about our supplements. So, this are you co- doing an ad yeah i am okay. wow i just decided to that's crazy i was inspired Check with me i'm upset i'm I inspired run our ads. oh really yeah i always i always just go with it okay okay fine I'm we're sorry, doing Parker. we're doing you guys should buy sour 
<laughs> you say it. So our our main purpose when making supplements is to make the healthiest products that we possibly can, and two, to make them with the best ingredient or sorry, best ingredients, and then two to make them taste the best. So not only do we stop when we get the best ingredients, but we keep going until they be- taste better than anything else that's on the market. That's anything that's synthetic, anything that's natural. Most companies believe that if you make something healthy, it has to taste bad. Well, we believe that we can actually make something healthy and taste better than anything else that is currently in the marketplace. So that's why, you know, all of our supplements are tested until we get that perfect taste uh, and make it extremely healthy. That's our chocolate greens, our electrolytes, our regular apple banana greens, our blue candy motivation, our other motivations. They are phenomenal tasting. And they're super, super clean and healthy. I heard this company say that they don't compromise quality for taste. And my response was, you don't have to. Boom. Boom. You can, make, you can still make things taste incredible. Yeah. And that's including our recipe books, too. Like all those recipes. Oh, my God. Those all buffalo, the recipes. Those buffalo yeah, chickens. dude. The buffalo chicken wraps. Did you like what they I made the today? Bomb. The meat lovers. Yeah. Egg casserole. Egg bake. I got to. I got to. We got to do a video on my from scratch uh, cauliflower pizza. Oh, yeah. It's so good. That I is the Dr. pizza. Dr. Berg you, made a cauliflower yeah. pizza video. And Dr. Berg, I respect you. But you're wrong. My cauliflower pizza is the best. Let's do it. Let's film it. Okay. We get back from our trip. Yeah. Um, I like that. When we get back from the trip. So Jonathan interrupted me and did an ad. Um, Bada boom. I was inspired. Yeah. Just like in the middle. I was talking about the people who commented. Now, I do want to say one thing. You guys need to check back a week later to see if you won. Because yep. I'm pretty sure our winner from the last one, Samantha, never contacted Samantha? anyone. Samantha? Yeah. Samantha. Uh. Samantha. I Not don't think, Samantha again. Did she contact anybody? I, You know, possibly. I just told my team and maybe they handled it. I have no idea. So, yeah, I said, hey, Samantha, you won. She didn't say anything. You know, what? she's being a total Samantha right now. Oh, my God. Anyway, so the check back because it's a week later. We post these on Monday. The next Monday, we know who won. Yeah. So Samantha, anyway, call into our it. office. We don't have a phone. Oh, my God. We got to get a phone. Okay. We're off the, we are just off the rails. Okay. I found the, the droid I was looking for. Okay. Okay. okay Star it's, Wars. It's in this book, The Healthy Keto Plan, and this is what it says. Another activity that inhibits thyroid ho- hormones is a low calorie diet. When you cut calories, your thyroid compensates. Compensates. Let me start this over. Yeah. Cause you should get closer to the Stutter- mic anyway. Good, I'm stuttering. Please. We can't even hear you. Another activity that inhibits thyroid hormones is low calorie diets. When you cut calories, your thyroid compensates by lowering the metabolic rate. However, people confuse cutting calories with intermittent fasting. Low calorie diets create nutritional deficiencies which result in cravings and hunger, whereas with intermittent fasting, you are decreasing only the frequency of eating without restricting calories and making sure that your meals are nutrient dense and satisfying. We will be looking at intermittent fasting in more detail in the later chapters. Nice snap. This is well, this is great. This is how you know, by the way, that we're we're these are not scripted, is because we can just full on. If Jonathan and I talk while Tiffany reads her book, and I like, it's like I'm looking. She like just this. likes this to read during do. the podcast. This is what I do. She loves reading during it's our basically podcast. Basically, like Twitch, but instead of video games, it's Tiffany reading. Stop. Okay. There's a section here that says loose skin under upper arms. That's exactly what I'm trying to fix with fasting. It's like Rocky, oh boy. It's like Rocky Balboa here. Let me see yours. You have none. It says... Jonathan, do this thing. No, 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 to this. What? Like the Rocky. Oh, d- 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 yeah. Okay, dun, 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 dun. Oh, like this. You guys both don't have it at all. I have had it a lot, especially because I have lost now almost 100 pounds. But it says sagging under the arms, chin, or midsection can occur because the body protein that holds the skin firm is breaking down faster than it's building up. Stop it. What do we do now? Okay, well, we're left with a problem. No, so this is why I'm excited to see. This is why I'm excited to see what's going to happen with fasting. People have already said that my arms look better than they did just a week ago. Yeah. yeah. No, you're a good looking cat. Yeah. Well, she is a human being. I just, I just, anyways. So dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, all right, so That's that. Cool. Uh, so I'm on day eight today of one meal. Am I? Yeah, day eight. One meal a day. No, you're like day nine. I honestly feel so good. And on t- 
I have such this hand to mouth addiction of like wanting to eat food that's entertaining all the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm finding that starting to like slowly diminish and it's yeah. almost making me sad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. But, I, but, uh, but and, and I'm not though. Cause I'm like, I don't, I don't miss anything. I'm just so content, but I love making recipes so much for people. And I love feeding people foods that they love anyway. So I am going to go back into that as soon as I'm done with this. And people are asking me how long I'm going to do it. I said 60 days, but now people are like with the rate of which you're losing weight, there's no 60 days in it for you mm-hmm. because I, f- I can't be 105 pounds. So well, then we're going to have to up your protein. So you start getting some muscle mass. Well, I'm already having a lot of protein, but I mean, I don't know. You're not having 3,000 calories. No, no, and that, and that you wouldn't need that much. Well, well, we'll see. Stay tuned for what I we're going to do next. So I don't pay attention to my calories. I don't. Um, I'm only trying to get nutritional fr- requirements from meat. So I'm eating one pound no. of ground beef every I day. Only, you, guys, you guys are way more scientific about this than I am. It took I'm about. Just, I'm just trying you, to this show. Is like this is like four out of my 75 books. I know, I know, but I'm just trying to show people the spectrum of the same thing, pretty universally. Uh, Jonathan's the only one who's not really doing OMAD anymore. But pretty universally, yeah. we were all doing the same thing in a different way. For me, uh, I am keto. I kind of just eat whatever I'm in the mood for whenever I'm in the mood for it. A lot of people ask me, well, what's your schedule? And I'm like, I don't know. Sometimes I'm hungry at 11 and I eat at 11. Sometimes I'm not hungry till 7 and I eat at 7. Um, I try not to eat past 6. It's rare that I do, but I'm very lackadaisical about it. And I go, today I'm in the mood for a salad. Tomorrow I'm in the mood for a blue cheese butter steak. Oh, my God. We'll make that a blue cheese amazing. butter. amazing. You love blue cheese, right? I do. I Comment below if you love blue I cheese. I love blue cheese. I'm addicted. I will make, we will do a video. I'm going to hijack Tiffany's Instagram. I will teach you all how to make a blue cheese butter steak. It will be the most delicious thing you have ever had in your life. It tastes like literal candy. And it is only, it's full keto. It's as keto as could possibly be. It's protein See, and fat. Parker, Parker smokes brisket. I smoke blue cheese. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, in my vape, my point is, I'm just joking. My point is, should is we talk about the vape thing? The vape? Sure. You want to talk, talk about vape? Let's talk about vape. So vape. my brother, he's one of my brothers. I have like 300 brothers, but my mm. other there brother. There are far too many of us. Mm-hmm. No, There's my, way too many. My older, he's my younger brother. My older brother, Michael, I have made him get a glucose monitor because he gained a little bit of weight after he just had his first baby. I mean, his uh, wife. Only baby. There for together they he made a baby make the baby she made the baby but anyways they just had their first kid and of course just like jonathan gained 40 pounds support weight michael gained 40 pounds support weight technically too. i only gained like 25 but whatever so neither jonathan, nor you were so fat maybe he gained 25. i was disgusted i don't know but no, he I'm kidding. Uh, he's he's been into bodybuilding and whatever for many 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 years so he's not very happy that he ended up you know gaining this weight so he's had a little pouch where he kept his cookies that's fine i mean we like to do those things so Mm -hmm. but he's been upset about it and so uh, i i made him get a glucose monitor and he did come to find out he's actually pre-diabetic and so he's waking up 110 uh, 100 to 125 is pre-diabetic according to the american i was going to say dental association Mm, (laughs) the american diabetes association that's the authority it's uh it's 100 to 125 so he's waking up at 110 so he's pre-diabetic i'm really happy that he ended up listening to me and getting the monitor unfortunately it took him about three months to decide to do it i wish he would have found out sooner but better now than never so one of the things is he was following all my instructions on what to do calling me what should i eat blah blah blah. and he's like okay well i lost eight pounds initially and i'm not losing any weight anymore and I was like, well, what did you have today? And he said, blah, 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 blah. I was like, there's nothing wrong with any of that. What time did mm-hmm. you stop eating? Okay, good. Well, there's nothing wrong with any of that. Okay, so then he he calls me one day and he's like, listen, I just don't get it. What is happening? And I'm like, you've got to be, you got to be pre-diabetic. This was before we found out about the 110. Mm-hmm. He ends up going and he's thinking and there's a long pause and he goes, oh my God, there's one thing we're not putting in the equation. And I said, what is that? And he goes, my vape and i was like he showed oh. me today oh he was spiking he him was, to 130 his, his his resting was spiking by 25 points because of the vape yeah that's crazy eating nothing his blood sugar was going fang and then i was like Do that oh. again what was it going fang one, one more time for me that just sounds nice fang i like that so yeah, we don't want to do fing when you're not even eating. So his oh. fasting wasn't even counting. Yeah, you should just make the sound for fun. It shouldn't be happening on your blood sugar monitor. I think we should right. all just take a second really quick and just, Jonathan, can I get one from you? Fing! I didn't like that. No, get out of the thing. Okay, sorry. Fing! <laughs> fing! I don't want to say it from a left. Fing! 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 
Dot dot. All right, we harmonize. Oh. Three, two, one, everybody. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the point is one of the main ingredients in vape is glycerin. Glycerin is a pure carbohydrate and vegetable so, glycerin and propylene glycol. Yes, Those are basically so the two ingredients. The deal is that that number is not going to come down for him until he quits vaping and he said mm-hmm. he was going to quit yesterday. So hopefully he did. He did. He threw them all away. Yep, yeah, that's the commitment. The sad thing about vape is that you have two addictions at play. You have nicotine and you have sugar, and it's simultaneously. Whoever thought of vape was genius. Let's put sugar, one of the most addicting substances on planet Earth, and nicotine together. Yeah. Let's call it vape. I became. I think it's a, I think it's a very interesting um, concept that people have with this, where you go, well, I'm, I'm not smoking cigarettes anymore. I'm not. I'm vaping. And... The studies aren't fully out, but the consensus is is that, you know, a doctor would prefer if you're going to do one, you vape instead of smoke. It doesn't mean it's good. You know, it, it it's still bad. It's still bad. It's basically going like, well, you know, I, I switched from, uh, you know, crack cocaine to, uh, to, to, you know, some I do a tiny bit of rat poison every day, just a little bit. And it's like it's all bad. You're You're still doing a bad thing. When I did when I smoked cigarettes opposed to vape when i started smoking vape man i got way like 100 times more addicted to nicotine that's why i said you have sugar and nicotine at i was going yeah. psycho yeah the only way i could quit that was i was just like I, I can never have smoke ever again i won't i won't touch a cigar to my mouth i won't touch a cigarette ever again i will not touch ever a vape ever again when we first met <coughs> jonathan was a schmoker which you know, no judgment. Ex- Smoking hot. Except for the fact that when he told me, I was like, <gasps> people still smoke? Wasting water. <gasps> yeah. Sorry, that was just a callback to Tiffany and I being in elementary school. Oh, uh, Jonathan says elementary. Elementary. elementary Elementopy. <laughs> okay, anyway, but yeah, you know. Uh, they changed the alphabet, by the way. They go L M N. Oh, because they don't want to do the Elemento game anymore. Elemento. Anyway, we're... Elemento. Elemento. In a minute. Got to turn that up. Bump me. Yeah. Um, so... That's the reason why. We're all over the place, guys. We are... We are uh, we're north, we're south, we're east, east or west. Fasting. Benefits of intermittent in fasting. Be, if so, you're smoking, you know, figure out how to quit. I think there's no one who's going, hey, smoking's healthy. But, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Right, can we the, talk about the, the fact doctors. that... Yeah, the doctors used to say... Right. This was the healthy thing to do. So can we just kind of apply that same thing to today that maybe just maybe they might be misleading us sometimes? I think it's more just about a common sense kind of kind of thing right now. It should be easy to go that diet for the most part is what can be traced back to almost all of your uh, problems. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The vast majority of which at least. And that's what we've spent this last year learning. I think so I think when, the problem when someone says there's just no way. I mean that was probably my favorite my favorite uh, troll you've ever gotten was uh, I, I she making me feel bad about giving my kids McDonald's. What a what a beep. Ba, ba, like, ba, ba, you, ba. Should, you should feel you should feel not great about giving your kids just disgusting things. You should you should not feel great about trying to put garbage into your body or into your children's bodies. And I think that the big thing is that it's like stop judging other parents for what they're doing. And I'm like, there's a difference between judging and educating. Yes. And that's the thing is that if we're not allowed to educate because it's judgment, then how are we ever going to, we're by 2050, we're going to be 50% of us are going to have diabetes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what? Now everyone's going to start dying because there's not enough to go around for everybody. They can't produce that much insulin. I think at the very least you should stop and consider what you're ingesting. Be willing to open up your mind to be educated because this is the thing is that my daughter had really bad eczema on the back of her leg and we went and saw a dermatologist and she was like, oh, it's, it's, just, it's every, it's every kid. It's really common. It's nothing you need to be concerned about, um, but we're going to give you the steroid cream. So we used the steroid cream and it didn't do anything, but the situation is that she was crying every time she would shower or the water would touch or the pool because it hurt so bad because it was oozing and bleeding. But at what point as a parent do you go, okay, 
we've got to try something else. So I spent a lot of time researching eczema to try to find out from a dietary standpoint what you can do. And there was a list of things. It was like, you could try grains, you could try gluten, you could try sugar. I'm like, we've already done all three of those. So what's next? And they were like, the next thing is salicylates. I think you say, I actually don't know the pronunciation, but it's like almonds, strawberries, blackberries. It's like a certain amount of like berries. Right. And I was like, okay, let's try that next. That was the thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was the thing for her. And so you have to be willing to be able to look if if you've exhausted going to the doctor and the doctor is like, listen, we there, we don't know. It's up to you now to figure out what you can do to help your child. Mm-hmm. You can't just sit back and go, sorry, tried. But that's the thing. And I went over this last last uh, episode, so I'm going to briefly go over it. But that's the thing that I think disillusioned me the most was the gastroenterologists for Kendra having Crohn's disease. This is a disease of the intestines saying that diet was not relevant to the disease. And I'm like, how? They've already proven it that's is. That's not possible. What you're saying is impossible. You cannot there's no way you don't have some recommendation. These are what is being put into the inte- the gastrointestinal system has something to do with the reaction of the gastrointestinal system. There's no way. It's equivalent to saying, no, there's nothing wrong with heroin entering your bloodstream. I'm like, and I, there's just no way that it's just you have Crohn's, therefore you need Remicade, and diet has nothing to do with it. And I'm like, you guys are... What, what do you want? And then the, you talk to two different doctors in the same day and both of them don't agree with each other. And this is where it's like, okay, it's up to you to figure out what it is yeah. and what you're going to do. And we're not trying to tell you how it is. We're just saying you should stop and consider what you're putting into yeah, your Yeah, and body. that's the thing is that I never try to say I'm a doctor, this is whatever. I'm always like, listen, I found this book by this doctor and listen to this viewpoint. If you've tried everything and you've gotten nowhere here's the source for you. Yeah. Like this is something you might want to consider because you can't just say there's no answer. Right. Yeah. And I'm sorry, that's the end of the story. Like, no. I mean, the yeah. sheer amount of doctors who are not, who are not advocating for diet changes is crazy. And, and the doctor that I saw just recently, he, uh, <laughs> he told me, he goes, yeah, you're, the human body cannot function without carbohydrates. And I was like, Based on what? <laughs> what? Yeah. I have. First of all, I've been doing this for nine months. Second of all, what about the carnivores who've been doing this for 10 or 15 years? They're clearly alive. Their blood work is perfect. How is it possible that the sentence, a human body cannot survive without carbohydrates, is true? It isn't. Yeah. And he sat there for 30 minutes. <laughs> I can't believe I paid $1,500 to tell me I needed chia seeds. Stop. Why? Why chia seeds? Yeah. Just over and over. Well, what about uh, taking chia seeds in the morning? And I'm like, is chia, is chia seeds sponsoring you? Like, why are you sponsored by this episode? Is sponsored seeds. by chia seeds. And mm. uh, and so I ended up directing him to my problem, right? Because I yeah. was like, I'm having a, an issue with my my uh, like esophagus and whatever. And I was like, this isn't new to keto. This is something I've always had, but yeah. I'm ready to face the problem, right? Yeah. You know, I didn't ever think of the fact that you could actually create your own yes. like. Uh, glucose from protein from whatever and you know because right now i have g- perfect blood sugars like i don't feel any crashes throughout the day my mood is just completely stable and i'm not having any digestive issues uh but i'm having zero carbs like i'm not even having zero net carbs i'm having basically zero carbs yeah. that is no sugar yeah. no fiber except my chocolate greens functioning better than ever yeah that's right and i'm not even sleeping anymore like honestly he's ready to hunt yeah that's right i you know i no, i'm still getting eight hours of sleep so and again the argument from the dietitian side is that the only reason why you feel so happy and so much energy is because you're running on cortisol and that's so bad for your body mm-hmm. but i got the blood work to verify that that's not true i don't have some crazy issue with cortisol they literally said to me your cortisol is perfect yeah yeah. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, so I wanted to, because th- we started by talking about intermittent fasting. We didn't actually get into, uh, we kind of got into intermittent fasting and keto on accident. And the reason I said that is because you were diagnosed with reactive hypoglycemia and your blood sugar would just crash. And then when I was doing my research, I was like, well, how do you stop reactive hypoglycemia? And then I read this article on men's health and I was like, oh, you stopped doing sugar. And so I told you to stop doing sugar. And you're like, nah, that ain't Phil. 
And then I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And I lost 10 pounds within four days. And then you're like, okay, that is it, Phil. And then you did it. And then that's when you started doing this intense research on intermittent fasting, keto. But you didn't start off with that. I, so I didn't start intermittent fasting until November. I think the day after Thanksgiving. So it was wow, like the 29th. I didn't know it was that long. Yeah. So, I, well, maybe not intermittent fasting. I think I did some sort of schedule, but I didn't, I hadn't had it completely figured out yet. Yeah. So I was still having things in my fasting window that I shouldn't have had because it would have broken my fast, but I was, I wasn't eating food. So I was, yeah. ta- I, I really did a good job taking baby steps and not jumping into anything that I wasn't ready for. Yeah. We, we didn't do OMAD until we did three so, meals a day for like two months, two meals a day for two yeah. more months. And it's not like a, Oh, you just start with OMAD because honestly, the thing that I realized with our business is that if people don't learn to cook delicious healthy food then they're always going to end up reverting back to mcdonald's you've got to stop eating out that is the thing you have to stop eating out because cooking is the most important out of bad health you've got to stop eating food that's making you sick i mean just that's plain period that is what it is if we did stop eating the food that's making you sick yeah if we started where we are now which is a year later doing keto and intermittent fasting and different versions of it carnivore whatever we would have quit you know, within the first three months, we would have quit if we said, okay, we're eating one meal a day. We're only eating ground beef and cheese and this. We would yeah, have, yeah. we would have reverted hardcore. And I, and I always tell people, they're like, do you think I should just jump into what you're doing? I'm like, absolutely no. not. What are you trying to do? Torture yourself? Seriously. No way. Let it come to you at your pace. When you're ready, do that. I was ready people, to do this. Some people may never want to do OMAD. And, they might not and, even and, ever want to do two meals a day. And, yeah. And, and you don't have to, there's, I guess, depending on how bad your insulin resistance is, you might get to the point that is what you have to do. It really just depends, but it's always worth trying the easier route first. That's why clean keto for beginners is the perfect yeah. first step because it's obviously you're not going to lose weight the fastest, but you're going to lose some weight I mean, immediately. Some of these people, right? They yeah. did. They And some people did lose like a hundred pounds. Rachel lost a hundred pounds in just a few months. Just a few months. Insane. Uh, she, Insane. From everything that I've heard, and I, I haven't followed every single day, but from everything I heard, she took things at her pace. She started with clean keto for beginners. And anyways, I should post one of her photos or something on here. Maybe I'll send you one of her photos. Yeah. Is Rachel the one that wants to come on? Uh, one, No, she didn't say anything. I'm sure she would love Rachel, to. Rachel, message us. Yeah. Comment down below, Rachel. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. That'd I mean, be amazing. I would love to get some of our people to. Another book, not sponsored. This is Mark Sisson. I call him the sexiest man alive. He's like. 65. Jonathan's right there. 65 years old. Just hear me out, though. Hey, I might be good looking, but I'm not the sexiest. I can admit that. No. No, hear me out, though. <laughs> it, it, he is like 65 years old. Somebody told me about this guy, and they're like, you'll never meet another guy this age in this good of shape. He's, yeah, he has an A-pack and everything. He, Tom Cruise. He's smoking. No. He's he's better than Tom Cruise. This guy is smoking. Nobody's better than Tom can you Cruise. See? Can we see any of these? You can do the back one. Everyone can see the back one. Anyways, back one. Get the back one further to the. So he wrote this book, Two Meals a Day, uh, and he is the owner of the Primal Kitchen. He's the. Uh, oh, I love their sauce. The I do their. Oh my God! Yeah, their ranch and their blue ranch, cheese and their yeah. barbecue, all that I stuff. I, I am an affiliate. I no, I'm joking. I'm I not. I didn't see the I'm blue not. cheese. No, nothing is sponsored about this. I just wanted to show you guys. So there's one meal a day, two meals a day. Primal Kitchen, send us free stuff. We like your stuff. We love it. We don't like it. We love it. Anyways. I like it. So he is a prime example <laughs> and definitely uh, a good opinion leader in this community. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the intermittent fasting or intermi- intermittent eating the fastest way to health. I mean, like it's all here. There's books on but, all this. And the truth is you could find this is what I really realized more than anything. You can find a book on anything you want to validate your rightness yeah yeah if you, I, I walked into the into barnes and noble the other day because i like to go there and pick up some of these books each time i go and there was this book um from a guy that i actually know anyway so i picked it up because i already knew it's not he, he said the only thing that matters is calories he said there's a whole bunch of people now coming out and saying that insulin this insulin that he's like forget about insulin it means mm-hmm. nothing and i'm sitting there going Oh my God, somebody is going to pick up this book, but you can, you can literally validate whatever you want. Vegan is the best thing in the way to health. Uh, plant-based is the best thing. Carnivore is the best thing. I like best low thing. fat, flow so, fat, anything you want to validate, you can validate what was, it comes down to. Yeah. What it comes down to is 
what works for your body and what yeah. makes you thrive. Amen. Amen. Well, that was the thing is that I, what I like doing on a personal level is I like going and kind of looking at both, both points. Yes, me too. And then going, okay, so for instance, on keto, I want to, I want to read uh, the most pro keto book I can find. I want to read the most anti keto book I can find. And I typically, what they'll do in the book is they'll go, okay, cool. This is the basis of what we're talking about. And then every single chapter following is all about building on that basis that they've established. Yeah. And it's really easy then because then you can go, wait a minute, your basis doesn't make sense. And the other guy's basis does make sense. Right. And, and that's, that's what really like blew me out of the water on everything. I mean, I was, I was vegan for a while and, um, I've done keto. I've done a ton of different diets. I was a fighter for eight years. So, you know, you you have to control your weight perfectly. Um, and so doing that, you go, okay, cool. I understand now going like what you are trying to build as a, a, a fundamental building block. And then if I figure out that that fundamental building block actually has a lot of falsity in it, um, or that it wasn't, gotten to in an honest way like when we talk about a study being paid for by like you know coca-cola or coca-cola or the it's fact good that for you. Uh, the number one uh you know kids food brand nestle uh also Kellogg's. also owns uh, uh, uh prometheus i think is what we found out the number one leader in uh gastroenterological med- gastro uh, intestinal med- medicine and kidney um the, a few the things food companies that are making us sick should never be able to also own the things that treat the sicknesses yeah, yeah. anyway so when There's you on that when you look into that and you can find the flaws and the fundamentals then you can go oh and if you read a book from a trainer that says it is impossible it is scientifically impossible for you to be in a calorie deficit and not lose weight, and then you've been following that book for three weeks, four weeks, and you haven't lost a single pound or an inch off your body, you know that that book is full of shit. Yeah. Or if you do the reverse and you do like twice what your body needs and have 3,000 calories and you're losing weight. This is what still. I'm saying. Yeah. You can, or if you are well, able just to know. eat 3,000 calories and, and lose weight. Well, we just know calories aren't created equal. But it's that's really what I'm easy. saying. If it's you if you get the advice, there was this, we were watching this weight loss show last night. I think it's so, so I love watching weight loss shows and watching the people transform and completely change their life. But we were watching one last night. This poor girl was 375 pounds, I think. Yeah. They put her on 1,500 calories a day and five hours of working out Ugh. a day. Yeah. And one of her check-ins, she had only lost three pounds in the last three months. And she started crying and she said, I promise you, I did what you told me to do. I don't know why I didn't lose weight. And I'm sitting there going, I know. Ask me. Well, she started eating her family's she food. She was starving. And I'm like, this is what happens. Even though she was eating a lot, she was still working out five hours a day. There's no way she consumed. Anyways, maybe she did. But the point is, is that that's what happens. You get so starving. But what if you could do a diet where you didn't get so starving and you didn't need to work out five hours a mm-hmm. day? That's why clean keto doing it this way, uh, meats, fatty meats, uh, cheese. What if that works for your body, right? High fat, low carb works so well because it keeps you not hungry. Yeah. You don't have to count calories and the fat just burns away. And then magically you have good blood work yeah. if you're doing it the clean way and you're eating enough and you're following the program the way it says to do it. Well, I think that's what, it, what, what, you know, what we're doing and what like our group is doing, like the, um, the clean keto people who are all doing this. It's really important work because, you know, we're not just trying to say like, yeah, we're, we're keto, you know, we're, we're. We're trying to do what's effective. That's right. And what yeah. actually Whatever works. that may be. And, yeah. and, and a lot of people, I, it's not, I, I was talking to Jason, um, the blood sugar king. I was talking to him on the phone and I said, you know, in, in an ideal world, like I would be able to be animal based and I would be able to have a lots of good uh, fatty protein and tropical fruits. I love tropical fruits, right? Mm-hmm. I said, but what matters more to me than anything is like my glucose control, right? And he goes, well, that's the thing is like, that's why the keto diet works is because the glucose control. So yeah. if you can do a diet that you find foods that control your glucose, it doesn't matter if they're 
low carb foods, right? Yeah. If it doesn't spike your blood sugar. So that's what I'm trying to get to is personalizing my diet when I'm done burning all the fat that I want to burn and getting rid of my fat storage that I held on to for yeah. so long. Yeah. I want to be able to get to a point where like I can broaden my amount of foods that I can eat and still have a stable glucose. And he was talking about, Hey, white rice, if you put it in the fridge for 24 hours and eat it after it reheat it and eat it, you really won't have. And he showed a, a glucose spike. Does that mean I'm going to go t- test white rice? No, I'm not. That's not where I'm at right now in my mm-hmm. journey where I want to do that. Is it something I'd be willing to experiment with afterwards? Yeah. Hey, that'd be cool if I could have white rice and it didn't spike me to 175 and I didn't go reactive and freaking have a hypoglycemia attack after. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Like, that would be amazing if I could do that. Hey, sushi, you know what? Like there, it would really broaden. So I am trying to get to the point of I don't have to have zero carbs for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. After this, I will do enough experimenting to find the perfect personalized diet for my body and hopefully that those same methods will apply to most so i'll be able yeah. to share that information the suggested amount of carbs even on clean keto is 50 grams it's 50 i can never i can never do that right now oh, I, my body. I have yeah. five five i could do five. i have if yeah. i want to if i want to be in ketosis and burn body fat it's about five for my body. Yeah. Well, that's about all the time we have today. Folks. Hey, this was fun today. This it was, was so fun. fun. I had a really good this. time. I enjoyed this. Looks I like know. it's a lot funner when you're doing OMAD and your brain is working clear. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, I think uh, we've got a few. We've got a few things in the works right now. We've got three potential guests. Oh uh, that, snap! That will kick Jonathan out and uh, and sit in his no, chair. No, because I think they're gonna. Oh well, Jason might be here. Yeah. But I think we could make him a chair. I thought we were gonna we do three another, chairs. Yeah, we could get the other mic with uh, from Jonathan's office. There you go. Yeah. And then I um, have an extra mic as well. The one with Lily will be on Zoom. Mm-hmm. Okay. And mm-hmm. then she's carnivore. Right. And then um, Danielle just messaged me today. I haven't messaged her back. Um, that will probably be on Zoom. Oh no, I think she is. She might even be in Tampa. I'll ask her. So we've got we've got that. We've got three potential people um potential 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 we've got three presidential people um <laughs> we have uh, a commonly commonly asked questions type video uh, that we were going to do um we've got uh we've got various family members you wanted to uh, talk to yeah. um my haircut person stories my and haircut then, person is a hardcore carnivore did keto oh, he eats yeah. raw meat he is serious he was like Jeez. whoa i was like this he knows way more about he blew it jonathan out of the water and he was not ready for it i was not his dad lost like 150 pounds i wanted to get his dad on here because he lost 150 pounds and i was like yeah but most people who do this like calorie restriction diet they have all this loose skin and fat he's like yeah my dad didn't that's he crazy. lost like 100, 150 pounds, something like that. And his dad is even more hardcore than he is. And I was like, I don't, I can't. We're not ready for that. that. We're not ready. I'm not ready for it. We're not ready. He's going to come in here and just blast us all away with his mask. We're just going to go, we'll yeah. leave because we know nothing. Yeah, yeah we'll let y'all so, two sit in the chair. And then lastly, I was going to say we have uh, what you guys recommend, which we do really, we do really listen to. Mm-hmm. We like what you guys recommend. You comment down below. We get enough people commenting the same thing. Uh, and poop emojis. We tend to do it. Here's my question: that. What do you guys want our next episode to be about? Yes. And I'll start working on get, gathering my information to talk about that. Yes. Yeah. And then we're also going to start doing our little cooking stuff. I'll hunt. So you'll gather. Make sure to subscribe. Cooking keto. Follow on TikTok. Can you put my TikTok picture here? Yeah. Follow on TikTok. Follow on Instagram. We're going to start posting reels of food that you can mm. eat. Perfect. Nom. Mm. Nom, 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 nom. Give me some of them recipes. Okay, mm. gang. Bye. 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 Raise the roof.